Seventeen miles on the freeway Dragging my heart through a relay When will my skin feel sea spray? Isn't that just lovely? Is, is that an actual dead fish? Oh dear God. Wings, wings, wings. My God. Oh, it stinks too. Yeah. What's up guys, it's me, Mr. Bradley, and today we're taking a dive into a not so sparkly topic. Water pollution. So water pollution, it's like treating our lakes, oceans and rivers as a dumping ground for rubbish and chemicals. It poisons and contaminates the water, kills aquatic creatures and gives risk to giving birth to this thing. We're clear. Stand by to pull her up with the winch. Open the door. Open the door. So what actually causes water pollution? Imagine all the stuff that we threw away ended up in the water systems. Plastic bags, newspapers, bottles, and whatever your dad left in that toilet bowl last night after that Indian takeaway. Even when we don't throw it directly into a water source, it can still be carried by rainwater into the rivers, oceans, and lakes. Water pollution can be caused by many things. Rubbish being dumped near to or into water sources. It could be caused by factories dumping harmful chemicals or industrial waste into rivers or lakes. It can also be caused by power disposal of nuclear waste. Farmers using harmful pesticides or fertilizers that are washed into rivers or streams after rainfall. Another cause of water pollution are oil spills, which is caused by damaged or leaking pipelines, or fishermen cutting or dumping nets or fishing lines in the ocean or lakes, causing plastic pollution. Check out our footage from a trip I took a while back in Egypt. We were on a snorkeling trip in the Red Sea and came across some of the most amazing coral reefs I've ever seen. We also spotted a bunch of cool fish and sea creatures like clownfish, pufferfish, sergeant major fish, moray eels, sea snakes and rays. But the one thing we spotted most of all on our trip was fishing nets. These pesky nets were all over the place, tangling around the coral. Our guide Mohammed did his best to untangle and remove the fishing nets wherever he spotted them, but sometimes they were just too big and tangled. Here's a sad sight, a fish stuck in one of those nets. Even when they're abandoned, these nets can trap fish and other sea creatures, and it's not a good ending for them. Thankfully, this one was lucky to be spotted by Mohammed. Finally, even greenhouse gases can cause water pollution. In cities just like Hanoi, where air pollution is a real problem, these harmful gases can dissolve into the water and cause water pollution, killing many fish and aquatic creatures. Here we are at West Lake. Let's just have a look at the lovely conditions. That's not even funny, it doesn't even make sense. I for a run here and I had to film this. Okay, so it doesn't look very pretty, but what's the big deal? We live on land anyway. Well, first of all, water pollution can contaminate people's drinking water, which, when drank, can cause harmful diseases like hepatitis and cholera. Secondly, let's not forget about the fish and other aquatic creatures that need a home too. All of this rubbish and chemicals ends up in the water, turning it into a murky mess and destroying ecosystems. <laughs> As a result, many aquatic animals like fish, crabs, turtles, whales and dolphins die, which can have a knock-on effect to the other animals that feed on these creatures. Even humans like fishermen are affected due to fish being killed, not to mention the risk to health for all of us that eat seafood. 
Thankfully, it's not all doom and gloom. There are things we can do to stop water pollution in our lakes, rivers, and oceans. Tune in to our next video as we learn how to stop water pollution once and for all. Now here's a steam stem or science oil pollution activity that you can do at home or in school. whoop -a. Start off by getting yourself a tub. I'll use a small one so that you can see it better, but you're probably better using something like this. Water, food coloring. Stir. Add some sea creatures. Five students with their toes. It's time for the oil spill. Students can now use different tools to try and get rid of the oil. We focus on three different techniques and compare them together. Pumping. Skimming. Absorption. Good work. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, give it a like and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to take part in our November mountain landscape competition for your chance to be featured in one of our videos. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.